Hello everyone and welcome to Boho Art by LD. Um, a few of you have asked me to show how I create my flowers. Um, so I just thought I would do this simple tutorial. Uh, there's all kinds of variations for the type of flowers that you wanna use, but I'm gonna try to keep this as short and simple as possible and hope that you put your own love and technique into your own picture too. Um, I'm going to include in the link anything that I'm showing you uh, so that you can try to purchase those um, through Amazon and also be aware of the fact that um, you can communicate with me any questions that you might have too. So let's get started. First of all, I want to show you um, what I'm using. I like to put my isopropyl rubbing alcohol, 99% is what I prefer, because it will dry um, quicker than the other ones, and that's why I do like it. This has been put into a little bottle that I prefer because it's very easy to squeeze out the amounts that you want in small drops. Um, some people like to use uh, pipettes or um, medicine droppers. Uh, I find this to be the best that I like. I'm also using today um, Ranger inks, the Cool Perry I'm using, because I'd like to create um, something that looks like a hydrania as close as possible. And I'm also gonna use Pink Sherbert, um, another Ranger ink. I am using Nara paper, as you can see here. This one is a 12 by 12. You can use any size that you want. Um, this just happens to be what I had on hand. I love Nara paper because unlike a lot of the other Yupo papers, um, and that's what this is, it's a synthetic paper. Um, you can wipe clean if you make a mistake, which I just absolutely love. Um, and I like to have handy a couple of Q-tips for maybe blending or blotching, or even if you wanna use a paintbrush, you can. And a paper towel also, should I need to wipe something away. Some people do like to use gloves. I don't, unfortunately, I they drive me crazy. Um, but that is your choice um, if you'd like to use it. Try to leave a little bit of ventilation in your room too because of the rubbing alcohol. Some folks like to use a mask, another thing that drives me crazy. Um, and then also you have your Revlon um, airbrush. You need to have something that can move the air around. So we have the Revlon airbrush and we also have this um, blower. It's uh, actually a Giotto, it's called. And um, sometimes people like to use this to blow the air around also, if you're not looking for more of a forceful um, push. This, this hairbrush also, I really love it because it has the cool setting, the low setting, the high setting. The cool setting um, is important because you want to be able to move that alcohol ink around as quick as possible and you don't want it to dry. Um, as soon as possible too. So I just happen to like the setting. It is a little bit strong sometimes. I wish I could find something a little bit um, softer for the pushing, but there we go. It is here and it has a hairbrush that you just pull right out. So um, this is what I like to use and I'll leave a link for that below too. Um, so let's get started. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my Cool Perry and I'm just gonna put a dot of this down here. I don't know what that little dark spot is. A little bit of rubbing alcohol. What you're doing is you're moving the ink back and forth into the rubbing alcohol. back and forth with your blower all the way around it to dry it.
Okay, so I have created the circle and I realized as I was getting into it that you really wanna lay down the inks in here in the center more without any rubbing alcohol because you don't want it to start spreading too much yet. Um, I'm trying to focus on keeping the color concentrated in the center and then having it kind of fade out around the edges. Now is the time that I'm gonna start taking the rubbing alcohol, putting it down on the edge, blowing it in, blowing it out, blowing it in. And that will give a faded effect around the flower. Now, I'm gonna, you're, I wanna show this to you. Um, you're gonna have to listen to the hair blow dryer, but um, I don't wanna put it on a fast motion because I want you to really see the effect that I'm trying to get. And I'll do that just for the first couple so you get the idea and then I'll speed it up so I, you guys aren't going crazy watching this forever. Okay. Full setting. Drop. Right here. Roll it in. Roll it out. Roll it in. Roll it out. Okay, so guys, at this point, um, I like the way it looks. I, I like the shape. I, I think it's um, pretty representational of a hydrania. Um, I'm gonna continue on to put another one up here and another one probably over here um, if you wanna continue to watch it or you can just fast it to the end. But I want you to see the stems that I will be putting on them at the end too. Um, I take, I, I like this contemporary looking type of stem where I take a ruler and, um, you know, you can make whatever kind of stem that you want. If you want to make more of a soft flowing one, go ahead. If you don't want to use any stem, you don't have to. You can just do bunches of flowers. Um, but this one I like to take and I take, uh, you can take any art marker that you want. This is a green, uh, Kelly Art Art Marker G554. Um, I just had it laying around. That's why I, I grabbed it. I think the green is pretty representational of what a true green um, stem actually looks like. So now I take the ruler and I kind of, you know, you put it where you think the center is and I lightly draw a straight line down and then from there just kind of draw this in a little bit And then I like to take these little circles like this. And voila, you have your beautiful hydrania and if you want to watch it to the end um, I'll post a picture of what it looks like um, once I add the other flowers into
So there you go, guys, my beautiful hydrangeas. Um, stems completed, three of them on a 12 by 12 narrow sheet of paper. I hope you enjoyed this, um, learned something from it, and feel free to ask me any questions at any time. And I look forward to meeting again. Bye.